Finland four and a half hours to this area where uh, I was introduced to these people. And as soon as I got there, it's like I was on another planet. Um, it was like an out of the world experience for me. They're very organic, as Helen was saying. They have nothing, you guys. And uh, they're very organic. They're farmers, they're uh, ranch workers, they have cattle, they build their own homes. Uh, they have several wives, several children. It's like very organic way of life. And I fell in love with them immediately. Uh, their spirits are, are just, I don't know, I want to say just so receptive and welcoming and happy. They don't have much, but they're happy people. They're content with what they have. But but I want to say, now that I come from another part of the world, they have huge needs, especially medical assistance and all that. Um, the way to pray for these people, I would say the good thing is the Lord has already prepared their hearts. Um, I believe uh, he's gone ahead and prepared the hearts of these people from probably a very long time ago to hear God's message. However, they never knew that Jesus came over 2000 years ago. And what an opportunity we have to share, maybe even for the first time, the message of our Lord. Like, let's, let's just say we are like the first disciples going and sharing the gospel with these people that never heard before. And from there, the gospel is going to spread throughout the region. Um, there's 300 of these villages that need to be reached, uh, over a million people that need to be reached. So I would say prayer, prayer points is, um, you know, um, there's heavy warfare. When we are going to do God's work, there's heavy warfare. The enemy will try to kill, steal, destroy, stop the message of our Lord going forth and maybe even keep them in bondage. Things always come up there. So pray for the Lord's um, you know, protection to surround our, our team and our time that we're going in February, uh, that no enemy attacks are going to go through the shield of our Lord's protection surround it. Second, definitely the receptiveness of the people, the hunger to increase more and more. Um, third, if you can pray that a Bible will be translated in their language, they don't have one in their language. So that would be good. We will be working through translators, of course, but they need a word of God, you know, in their language to be able to grow in it. Fourth, uh, let's just pray also that people will be open and receptive to baptisms. Um, you know, that baptism is an important part of our commitment to follow Jesus, that part. And then uh, the medical professionals that will be going, oh my goodness, you guys are such a huge help, you won't believe. So that the Lord will really use you and your hearts and your spirits and your work in a powerful way to break through maybe some boundaries if there are there or some fears or some um, misconception about the West coming and helping and they will see truly Jesus through you all. And I know they will through all of us. Um, and definitely pray for translators that we will have good accurate translators that will be accurately translating for the medical team and for the evangelism team. So I would say all those would be great prayer points. Um, and you know, these people are just colorful people. They're friendly people, they're loving people. Um, it's like from the time you get there, their hearts are with you. We're, it's like we're together already. So um, I'm just really excited for this, for this trip. Thank you so much, Sophia. And uh, I, you know, from the information that I have gathered about the country in general, um, you know, Pakistan is a Muslim country, but I do believe that uh, they are somewhat different from the Muslim countries in the Middle East. Uh, um, some of their the direction that their government is going is different. And so we have this very unique opportunity. Um, there are other things that uh, maybe are not directly on our agenda that I'm specifically praying the Lord will give us an opportunity. Um, you may have read on the news that there is a um, big uh, issue right now happening in Pakistan, and that is deporting all the Afghani refugees, millions, <laughs> millions of people. Some of them came to Pakistan during the Soviet war, which would have been 40 years ago. Uh, so they've already made routes that's like home to them. Others migrated more recently when the Taliban government took over the country. Um, but whether they've been there a long time or not, being moved from there back to Afghanistan, for some of them, it means losing their lives. Uh, yeah. For others, it's just a major inconvenience and being uprooted in, from the country where they already made a life. Uh, so there, there is that turmoil happening. On the other hand, the government of Pakistan doesn't feel like they can, their economy can support these people and, and they're detrimental to the economy of Pakistan. So it's a complex issue uh, and who knows who's right and who is not. But I've had the 
Afghani people in my heart for a long time. And uh, when I became aware of that, I felt like, well, God, this is your opportunity to connect us with these people. So I want us to pray that we have the opportunities to, um, you know, that our agenda is God's agenda uh, and that uh, we are open and willing and uh, mindful of the opportunities that uh, God places before us. Overall, sometimes, you know, that's how the missions work is. Sometimes you don't have to have a very strict agenda. You just have to set your foot on this land and um, be the representatives of Christ. Be there uh, just who you are in Jesus and, and let people see Jesus in you. Sometimes you don't even have to say a word. Uh, I, we are a little concerned about the language and communication barrier because it seems like we're going to have to have a double translation uh, from English into Urdu and from Urdu to Marwari. And that's always, <laughs> even one set of translators is already a complicated issue. <laughs> Having two makes it that much more difficult. But you know what? Um, it's all not a surprise to God. He's aware of all of that. And so our part as a prayer team right now to lift all this before the Lord and trust him that we can accomplish all things with him and through him. So uh, we're going to uh, spend the next few minutes um, praying. Um, after that, we will open it to questions and answers. But again, I, I want to say that there are quite a few questions that I'm not going to be able to answer because um, these details will have to be kept private. So if you have questions that I'm not able to answer, feel free to email them to us. And that's how we're going to handle this. And so I'm going to start in prayer and Denise, I will have you close it in prayer. And then if you feel led to pray out loud, that will be great. Father, we lift your name high today, Lord, and we just give you glory and honor because your love is for all the nations, Father, whether they know you, whether they serve you or not. Uh, you love the people of Pakistan. You love those who are seeking you. You love those who are not seeking you. And you love them so much that you have stirred our hearts to travel there and, and share the good news and, and love on people and help them in any way that we can. And so, Father, we thank you for this opportunity, Lord. We thank you for your perfect timing that you cleared uh, the schedule for us, that you uh, connected us uh, with the right people, Father. I thank you for the people that we have not met yet, but we will be serving together with, Lord. Father, we just way for our team as we are praying and uh, seeking you and, and arranging all the details, Father. Let it be anointed by you, Father. We want to follow your guidance. We want to follow your wisdom, Lord. Um, even, even our schedule there, Father, let it be completely yielded to your plan, Father. And Lord, uh, we ask that you equip us and enable us to reach every single person that we need to reach during that time, Father. We just fully really trust you, Lord that you will order our steps, that you will equip each one of those that you called, Lord, with everything that we need, Father, to accomplish this. We may feel like sometimes we're inadequate, but in you, we can do all things. Father, I thank you for those that you call to help, Lord, help in prayer, help in giving, uh, in financing this mission, Lord. We, uh, we just trust you that um, the right people respond to this opportunity and that that uh, we will lack in nothing as we go uh, to proclaim the gospel there, Father. And we give you praise and glory in the mighty name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. <clears throat> Lord, we um, thank you so much for this opportunity. And we just pray your divine um, guidance on um, the pastors and the team members there that are organizing and planning that we we just ask you to come against all the plans of the enemy and that, that you will just keep him under your feet, Jesus. 
Lord, you've loved these people um, that we're going to be meeting with from before they were born. And Jesus, uh, I know you long to see them set free from the bondage they're in and to have the light of life. And so we we just pray, Jesus, in these few um, couple months before we go, that you would be preparing their hearts, preparing who you want, attending uh, the outreaches and the clinics. Lord, we just ask you to uh, be in charge and orchestrate uh, every detail, Lord, as, as we know you do so well. And um, Lord, we just pray for a mighty harvest. Lord, I just pray that you would just amaze us with the mighty harvest that you grant yourself, Lord. We pray that you will raise up a uh, man of peace, uh, Lord, particularly strategic uh, leaders, that they would receive you, Jesus, as their Savior, so that those home churches could immediately uh, begin, Lord. And uh, we just pray for a man of peace in every one of those villages, Lord, every one of those 300 villages, Lord, so that there could be just flames of revival there among um, the Malawi people. Thank you, Lord. God. Heavenly Father, we just praise and thank you for this trip. We thank you for the people that you have chosen to go on this trip. We thank you, God, for your protection. We claim the 91st Psalm for each one of us, Lord, <clears throat> before, during, and after. Lord, that we are protected, that you take care of us, that you give us provisions, Lord, that we're able to bless these people. We thank you, God, that they are open for your word. We thank you, God, that um, the plans of the enemy, I declare the plans of the enemy are defeated by the blood of the lamb. You cannot come against this in Jesus' mighty name. And I thank you, God, that those Bibles, we will have Bibles that will be translated into their language. We will have thank you, Lord. A, a translator who will be able to translate for us. Uh, it'll be a miracle. We'll know it too, because it'll, it'll just flow. It'll be all put into order. So we thank you, God, for miracles, because you are a still, you are still doing miracles, God. And we praise you for that. We praise you for who you are. You are the great I am. There is nothing impossible for you, oh God. Yes, so Lord. we praise you for this trip. We praise you for a mighty, mighty revival to go through these villages, Lord, that they become hot on fire for God. And it just spreads throughout Pakistan. And we thank you, God. We thank you for these people. We thank you for the uh, ones that are the missionaries that are coming forward. And uh, we also ask, Lord, that um, you put everything in order for their families, the missionaries that are, are coming over, that everything gets in order for them, that they can come in peace and leave in peace. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I mean, Thank you, Lord, for this opportunity you're giving us to make your name known in Pakistan, um, in a devout Muslim country, Lord, where the light is very shining, very dimly, God. Thank you, Lord, that you're bring, being, bringing us as being the light of Jesus in this dark part of the world. I pray, Lord, that we will shine brightly um, with, with your name and for your sake and your purpose, Lord, among these people and among for the sake of the whole country, God, that it would be changed for your kingdom purpose, God. Um, I just pray that you would prepare um, all the details of this trip um, um, in the ground in Pakistan, as well as what is, as it is being made here from U.S. side. Um, pray that you would give the leaders wisdom, Lord, uh, on the decisions that they have to make. Uh, pray that you would bring the right people, Lord, for this trip that would definitely be, would be used in a powerful way, Lord, to minister to so many. Um, hearts and minds would be changed on this trip, Lord, in a powerful way. We pray for supernatural miracles, God, on this trip as well. We pray for deliverance, healings, um, you know, prophecy, whatever you feel the way, the best way to minister to these people through your Holy Spirit, God, may you do that. And um, 
I pray that you are ready the villagers and ready the people that we are going to be meeting. Um, and I pray that when maybe they will even have a dream and a vision of us coming God. And when they see that, they will know that we are bringing, uh, as was said, a message of peace to them. And um, I do pray also for, um, I agree with that. I pray for churches to be planted in these areas um, as the gospel goes forth and grows in that region, Lord. And so we thank you for this opportunity, God. You're taking us to serve you in Pakistan. We pray that you would take us there safely. Um, our flight will get there safely. Our luggage will get there safely. Um, and we will be protected the whole time we're there and come back home safely, God. I know that God, <coughs> in your will, Lord, you take care of everything. So we just give up, give this time to you right now, Lord, in Jesus' name. And Father, we come into agreement uh, with each other, Lord, your word says when two or three are gathered together in your name, uh, that you're here with us and we can ask anything according to your will be done for us. We just thank you, Father, for all of these things that were mentioned in all of these prayers, Lord. We come into agreement. We say that as your word is going to go forth, it goes forth and accomplishes that which it was sent to do, it does not return to you, Lord. Lord, we just thank you, Father, that no weapon formed against any of the team members or partners uh in pakistan uh shall prosper lord we yes. thank you father for traveling mercies we thank you lord for um all the details of travel documents and entry into the country uh as well as uh exiting the country all be uh just padded with your supernatural favor and provision uh, every step of the way we thank you father for the uh all the new opportunities and the open doors uh, that you're going to orchestrate with uh, being able to minister to refugees from Afghanistan, from other countries, India, wherever you would have us to minister, Lord, we just thank you, Father, that each opportunity is, is seized as the team is there to minister, uh, just as you would have us minister. And I thank you, Father, for supernatural encounters with you, Lord, uh, for the Malawi people, for the people in Pakistan, Lord, we just thank you, Father, that. Um, their encounters with you would be so undeniable that they uh, um, they would repent and, and follow you, Lord, and just thank you, Father, for the amazing testimonies that are going to come from this mission, from uh, what you're going to do in the hearts and lives of the people in Pakistan, as well as in the hearts and lives of those who are going to minister. And we uh, put all of this in your hands and we trust you with it, Lord, and we thank you, Father, for uh, allowing us to go and, and do this with you, Lord, and with your help. And we just ask all of this in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Oh, your microphone's on mute, Helen. Sorry about okay. that. Um, so if you have any questions, um, you can ask them now. And like I said, if this is not something uh, that we can answer right now, uh, we can definitely answer this in the email also. For those of you who will be going on this trip, we will have a team meeting that will be a lot more detailed and uh, we will discuss um, some very specific things pertaining to us traveling, being there and all the other things. Helen, I do just want to reiterate because recording didn't start until uh, Sophia started sharing. So just to remind anybody who's listening, uh, that this is a, a closed mission trip if by invitation only. So if you are listening and you haven't uh, received an invitation, but you are interested in possibly joining us on this mission trip, um, just reach out to us. You can call us or email me at the email address that I put in the chat. And uh, one way or another, just contact us and let us know. We'll, um, we'll talk about the next steps. Uh, I also added the link to the mission trip application in the chat as well. So uh, we would just ask that you go ahead and start the application process, get approved to travel, and then um, then we can discuss the opportunity to, to join this mission trip once you're approved. So that's how it will work with this particular mission trip. I have one question about um, an email I believe you guys sent about the visa process. Uh, did you say you want all the information from everybody by December? Is that what you I think you said? December. Yeah. Okay. And the date is in that email, right? Yes. Okay. Just making sure. Any other questions? And when is the payment due for the trip? 
the full payment? Um, that will be all in the email communication. Okay. Um, so um, I I just have a question. So yes. uh, in Pakistan, um, you said that we'll have to buy the medications there. Are a lot of what are usually prescription medications available over the counter, or will we be obtaining those from a Pakistani physician, or how does that work? From what I understood that um, most of the medications we will be just able to obtain in the pharmacies. Uh, we are going to send our standard list um, that we use in all the countries uh, that we work. And so once they review this list, if they tell us that there are certain medications that they cannot obtain there, um, then these are the ones that we might need to bring with us. And so, um, you know, we will notify the medical professionals if there are some medications that uh, we will have to bring with us because we can't obtain them. Over and then, the, but, but from then, what I understand, they they it's quite uh, you know all the medicines are quite widely available, and most medicines that are prescription in the United States are not prescription in other countries. So, I don't okay. foresee a problem. Okay, and uh, Sophia, are the uh, would you say there's a lot of malnutrition? You said that it's like very organic, and they like grow crops and things like that. Do you think their nutrition is good or is it poor? No, their nutrition is not good. Um, they eat, uh, they would drink okay. milk usually from goats or camels um, or just whatever livestock they have. If not, then they don't have any um, any way of eating meat. Meat is very rarely found there. They would eat, I would say, more plants, fruits and vegetables that they grow, um, you know. So, okay. And among children, so vegetarian. among children, you will see a lot more malnutrition, I would say. No, they're not vegetarian. Um, I mean, as far as I know, they eat everything. Yeah. They're just no, because them of being, them being Hindu background, they probably don't eat beef at all. They're, so, you know, they're, Hindu is the background, but they aren't necessarily following all the laws of Hinduism. So they do sacrifice their own goats and animals and eat, and they have them for the purpose in their homes to grow them, to be able to sacrifice and eat it. Um, so I'm not sure if I could say exactly they're following all the Hindu laws. I know there are vegetarian Hindus, but um, I would say they eat everything. Uh, we have we have fed them okay. um, when we have done our outreaches, we have prepared meals for them with the meat cooked in the rice and they have eaten it. So. Okay. And so, Helen, will we be uh, bringing vitamins like we've done previously, yes. like over the counter? We are going to have the all the team members bring vitamins with, with us. So that's okay. normally quite pricey in the countries outside of the United States, and it's not frowned upon to bring some vitamins with us. In okay. Okay. All righty. And um, I don't know if you can answer this, Sophia, but uh, what diseases are particularly prevalent? Like, you know, in, like in Albania, you know, there was kind of a lot of obesity. So there was a lot of hypertension and diabetes. Um, the water, uh, I would say the water system is really bad there. They don't have clean, even the water wells, I would not say are very clean drinking water. So they seem to have a lot of eye problems um, and eye infections. I would say um, there's some kind of, worm um that supposedly is a skin eating the last this last trip that i just went on in september is a worm that is skin eating disease worm and it literally eats their stomach and goes into the intestines or something and i saw some people with holes oh, holes and so what we did was we gave them some antibacterial or whatever and help them with that but um it seems like that is there they have scorpion bites um they have the children have rash on their skin um they have they've all had a cough and a cold they all were like sick with something i'm not sure if it was was covid but they were all coughing uh, so there was that problem um 
weakness. A lot of them complained of weakness, I would say. Um, they're very weak, especially the women. Um, you know, they don't really go deliver babies in the hospital a lot because they cannot afford it. So they deliver, deliver at home. And I, I think maybe they lose a lot of blood or whatever, you know. So that could be one yeah. reason. Uh, ex exactly um, as Helen was saying, vitamin deficiency is a very, very big problem there. I would say iron deficiency is a very big problem there. Um, so, okay. yeah, if they have any kind of infection, skin infection, you guys, it, they have no help there for anything. So they use like plants or whatever organic resources they can find to put as a topical. But unfortunately it develops into uh, their foot or their arm starts swelling and then it gets it's infected even more. And unf unfortunately it goes through the body and it really affects their body. So I saw that a lot. Also I saw third degree okay. burns. Um, somehow they don't know how to carry hot water. So they put it all over themselves. and they don't have any way of um, treating the hot water uh, burns or third degree burns on their skin. Okay, and are they uh, cooking? Uh, do they cook with fire like in their houses? Yes, they cook on fires, open fires. And the fires are in the house? Um, let, me let me try to think about that. I don't remember seeing them all. No, they have it outside they, as far as I know. Outside, okay. And the altitude, is it kind of up in the mountains or is it no, low? No, it's a flat land right there. The region where we will be, it's flat. It's desert, more like a desert, I would say. So okay. yeah. it depends on the area where we go. There's some areas, there is a, a pond, a big pond, I would say, where they can go and access water nearby and there's crops growing. But most of the other places that we have gone, it's mostly desert region. Okay. They have insect bites, lice, you know, that kind of stuff. Well, it looks like we're going to have a quite nice medical team. Mm -hmm. So um, we will be able to address a lot of these uh, issues. And so uh, Anna specifically is uh, trained to be a midwife as well oh, as awesome. a medical provider awesome. and so um i'm uh, god provides yeah. <laughs> i think we're going to have an excellent excellent team well thank you so much everyone for joining this uh and and for those of you who are listening the recording again whether you are able to physically travel or just support the mission in prayer and giving you're going to be a part of a groundbreaking mission so yeah. we're very excited about that. And if you are already on the team list, please watch out for the all the email communication and there will be a um, schedule for our team meeting where we're going to dive more in depth on all the details of the trip. So blessings everyone. Thank you for joining and we'll see you on another missions meet in a couple of weeks. God bless you. Okay. Thank you. Bye, Bye guys. Bye. Bye. Nice to meet you. Please a safe flight home. Yes. Thank you. Have a good evening, everyone. Mm, bye bye. Bye, everyone. Bye bye.